Welcome back. We're seeing more cold cases solved thanks to DNA on genealogy websites. But as Maya Rodriguez found, those cold case breakthroughs may be benefiting one group more than others. Do you know who this is? What about him? Or maybe her? These are just a few of the several hundred children under the age of 18 who remain unidentified after their bodies were found. There's a tool out there that could help give names to these faces, but using it isn't quite so clear cut. The dates for the case files stretch back in time, sometimes decades. Their faces, an artist's rendering of what they likely looked like. All of these, children found dead in America. Their identities, unknown. Right now we have about 650, 660 cases uh, that we're assisting law enforcement, coroner, medical examiners to find the identities of those human remains. And their children? They're believed to be of children. John Bishop is vice president of the Missing Children Division at the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children. He says there's one tool that can be invaluable in helping identify these kids. When we look to the world of DNA, it is a wonderful tool. It's a powerful tool. But using DNA for identification only works when there is something to compare it to. That's where databases of DNA submitted by people to genealogy tracing companies can come in handy. But just who is in those databases is limited. One study found more than 75% of that available DNA comes from people of Northern European descent. Children of color, families of color, have a, uh, a smaller footprint in the DNA databases. That can limit major breakthroughs in cold cases, like the recent identification of Joseph Zarelli, the so-called boy in the box, whose body was found in Philadelphia in the 1950s. The turning point in that case, DNA submitted to a genealogy website by a relative, which allowed investigators to piece together a family tree and figure out who he was. As we saw um, with the boy in the box, I remember watching that on Unsolved Mysteries as a child and thinking there's no way you can have a little kid who was found dead in a box and nobody can figure out who this child belonged to. Erica Marie Rivers is the founder of Our Black Girls, which focuses on bringing attention to cases of missing black girls, including Black Jane Doe's who remain unidentified. When it comes to Jane Doe's, that's even more marginalized because now we don't have a name. DNA from genealogy databases could potentially help, but trust and privacy concerns surrounding it remain a challenge. When you speak about black and brown communities and trusting their DNA with law enforcement or any sort of investigative agency, and there is hesitation, I mean, I, I'm on 23andMe. I just wanted to figure out, you know, who I am, <laughs> where my family comes from. But at the same time, you know, I wanted my parents to do it. And my mom was like, absolutely not. Some of the DNA could potentially be used here at the Towson University Human Remains Identification Laboratory. These are the SNPs. Chemistry professors Kelly Elkins and Cindy Zeller can extract information encoded in DNA, compare it to samples, and fill in the details on human remains. It's those differences that allow us to be able to detect whether the person had blue eyes or brown eyes. Nowadays, we have a lot more power because uh, uh, much of the American public has been really excited about personal genealogy. But that power remains limited. It does take a bit of luck still that there are relatives who have um, uploaded their DNA to the database. And so we're finding that the crimes that are being solved are more of Caucasian people as opposed to Latinos or African Americans and other populations in our, you know, diverse country. Back at the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children, there is one simple thing they say anyone can do to help. When you see our posters, when you walk out of a store and you see a poster on the wall, when you're searching the web and you trip across one of our posters, is to just stop for a minute and look at that image. Because that move could hold the key to giving back a name to any one of these faces. Maya Rodriguez, Scripps News, Arlington, Virginia.